Welcome to the Shower Epiphanies podcast, where we explore your hidden thoughts and desires, revealing your greatest drop the mic moments. Now, here's your host, Art Costello. Welcome to the Shower Epiphanies podcast. Today, I am excited. I have a children's author by the name of Joy Resser. I hope I pronounced it right. And Joy has really got a great book out, and it's called Designed to Shine, Read Aloud Rhymes for Any Size Heart. And it is awesome. I read it, I guess, over the past four or five days, probably six or seven times. It's great. I'm going to encourage everybody to go out and purchase it for their children and themselves because it is for all audiences. Joy is the founder of Joy on Your Shoulders and, of course, the author of the book I just told you about. She is a spiritual counselor and does many other things, and we're going to learn about her. And I'm excited to have her on the show. Thank you, Joy. Welcome. Thank you so much, Art. I'm grateful to be here with you and the listeners today. It's my pleasure. And let's start this out by learning a little bit about you. Where you grew up when you were a kid? And just kind of take us through the whole gamut of how you've got to this journey of writing a book like this. Wow, thank you, Art. So I was born in Brooklyn, New York, where I lived for three whole weeks because mom was staying with her parents while my dad was in Air Force training in Georgia, I believe. So my family moved a lot. <laughs> I was a toddler on the Air Force Base north of Caribou, Maine, Loring Air Force Base. Then they moved to Racine, Wisconsin, where dad was from, and to Youngstown, Ohio, and to Toledo, Ohio, and to Youngstown, Ohio, and all this moving before I was six. But I grew up in Youngstown, Ohio, and with this name, Joy, and what happened was My family completely, well, not completely, because I do have memories of having some fun when I was a child, but in the bigger picture of my trajectory, they did squash my joy. My older sister repeatedly sassed a litany at me, mom and dad put you back in the hospital because you cried too much. Then they got the wrong baby back. You really don't belong in our family. So this gave me a 50-year wound inside me of not belonging. I felt that I didn't belong in the family. I didn't belong walking down the street. I was so self-conscious. It created in me a lot of judgment. I think it probably grew my ego. (laughs) I just didn't feel at ease anywhere. And my older sister would slam the door against me if I tried to talk with her. In our family, my dad was a rageaholic, door-slamming person. We needed to watch the news while we ate dinner. And I won't talk more about I don't think I need to go on and on about all the things that (laughs) that were hard for me in life. But what happened was in my 30s, when I was little, I tucked really inside myself and I went on a rock and communed with God. And when I was in my 30s, I journaled every day a prayer to become the joy I am created to be. I watched God's hand in my life, the synchronicities of being led to the right book, the right person, the right healer, the right class. I'm getting goosebumps talking about it because I have just been changed and changed and changed. And I know that (laughs) the topic for this program. No, no, that's fine. Let me tell you, I resonate with your story. My audience knows mine, but I'm not sure how much you know about me. But at nine years old, when I was abandoned, I went to a hilltop and had a conversation with God, and I listened to it. And that's the important thing. You've been on a journey, and that journey is taking you to this place and time right now. And all those past experiences are what makes Joy who she is. So with that said, go ahead. You can keep going. Anything's open. You can talk about whatever you want. So, Thank you, Art. 
The need to have closure in any given situation is sheer human nature. And when it comes to romantic relationships, this desire skyrockets. Has your previously failed relationship left you in immense pain? It's not uncommon for people to shy away from a new relationship after their first one fails miserably. The fear of the unknown makes them hide in a shell to prevent any future heartbreak. Relatable? Despite wanting to love and be loved, you can't take the plunge if your mind and heart are still locked somewhere in the past. Maybe you aren't aware of the power of releasing the past, or perhaps you don't know how to do it. Art Costello in his online course teaches the art of moving on from bad places to happier, more stable ones. This course can change your life for good, helping you beat all kinds of negativity on the road to eternal bliss. Sign up now before the gloominess gets the better of you at expectationacademy.com. So, you know, I think that's probably enough of an answer for that question is just that I had decades of not being this version of who I am today. And what happened was when my husband wanted to move to the mountains of Western North Carolina in 1995, he said, we're buying land so that we could move there when our sons are grown. So when our two sons grew up, we moved here in 2007, but before we did, I needed to clean out a house of 17 years that we had lived there, raising our sons, and I cried, and I cleaned, and I cried, and I cleaned, and then what happened in the spring is because I have lived in such synchronicity that Every spring, I took a journaling class, and one year it would be on friendship, would be the topic. One year it would be wisdom. The year we were moving away, the topic was letters to the future. (laughs) And have you had some perfect synchronicities, Art, that come, something arises for you? I think I'm, I'm in perfect synchronicity all the time. It's just <laughs> how I live. But I don't look to the future as much as I live in the moment. I take moment by moment and just enjoy and savor every one of it. But that comes out of my background of being in Vietnam and learning early on that, that death can come at any second, that you have to live for now. So that's my synchronicity of living is the moment and it just affects everything. So. Yes, and I'm with you. I have become such a present moment person, and I've been able to quiet the inner critics, and I just have a very quiet mind. But for me, writing the letters to my future in 2007 was a very important thing for me to do, because that was how I crossed that bridge from being in fear to being in love. Instead of being afraid to move to the mountains of Western North Carolina, after writing to my future, I was able to realize I'm going to live into an amazing life in these mountains. One year after we moved here, my husband wanted a divorce. So that was interesting. And I heard a voice when he brought that up It hit me in the gut like a black cloud, and I heard a voice that said, take in this darkness, you need it, you are going to transmute it. Mm. I I have goosebumps again, but I mean, I've been, we are all, I believe, so guided if we (laughs) pay attention to the messages. Oh, I've had, this conversation is so in tune with what I've been discussing on my shows for the past. People need to listen to their gut instincts and that voice inside of us. It will never fail us. It never fails us. When you listen to it and you understand it and don't try to buck it, it does amazing things in your life. But one of the things I've noticed in our conversation right now that I really love and resonate with is you've learned how to manage your expectations. Because what you're talking about is really in line with what I have researched and discussed with managing your expectations. And see, all of our fear lies in unmet expectations. When God planted the seed of expectation in us, he planted the seed of fear and faith. And he lets us free will decide which road we want to travel. 
and the positivity side of it and go with it, everything falls in place. Your life falls in place. So anyway, with that said. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Well, Art, you don't know how much that just resonated with me. Here's my example. Because I was getting on the highway on May 1st, 1996, and I heard, don't go. Okay, now today, if I was getting on a highway and heard that, I would exit and come back home because I do now trust those voices in me implicitly. But that day, Joy was going to interview a woman named Faith at our sister church, and she was at a church in downtown Cleveland. So because I wasn't grounded in my body then, I was living from the neck up, and I figured, oh, this is just fear in my mind talking. I mean, I was such a completely different individual than I am today. So I said a prayer and drove down because I also was in my perfection. I was a perfectionist and I had a deadline to do the church newsletter and I was going to interview this woman. A couple blocks from my destination, as I approached a green light, my mind registered that the people waiting at the red light, perpendicular to me, had a look of horror on their face. Just as I registered, why do they look horrified? My car got slammed into there and sent through the green light right in front of them. Now, I'm going to believe it's because I prayed for protection, but I was sent through a green light on a one-way street as the lead car when this man in a van behind me was having a seizure with his foot stuck on the gas. Uh. And when I went to downtown Cleveland to look at the police report to see all the people that had died that day, I got this second chance of living. And I had neck and back chronic injuries that I held in my body for nine years, not on purpose, but because I was clueless. I was a physician's daughter and chiropractic. Oh my gosh. Like It was not anywhere in my being other than it's wrong, it's quackery. I'm married to a nurse anesthetist, so I know it still exists today. It's taboo to go to a DC. But after nine years, I was at a Course in Miracles meeting, and a friend of mine stood up and she said, look how much taller I'm standing. And I recommend my chiropractor. I recommend my massage therapist. And I was able, what I call this like crossing a bridge of belief. And I have crossed a number of them. And beliefs are simply something we believe, but we don't have to forever have that belief. We can change our (laughs) our beliefs. Right, Art? <laughs> oh, yes, they are. <laughs> we, we can actually change it in a moment's time. <laughs> yeah. So I found my way to chiropractic and massage. Mm-hmm. And the thing is now, so the fact is that I've released so much because I was so tight for years. I was in fear for years, perfectionistic. But once I crossed over to love and I started doing body work and I've been releasing and releasing everything that's not serving me. And now I allow and I allow life to be life. Mm -hmm. And I am in the flow of so much goodness. It's so beautiful. (laughs) This is a great place to transition into me asking the question. This is what led you to writing this beautiful book. And if you hadn't lived all those experiences, there's so much emotion in it and so much wisdom that it's just beautiful. And I hope people will really, I've said it in the beginning of the show, but I'll say it again. I hope people go and buy it because it's not a hard read, something you could read every day to your child and be proud that you're teaching them these tidbits of wisdom that Joy is bringing to us. So bring us through the transition of writing in the book and how you move into that and the story behind the book. Thank you, Art. 
This actually, Designed to Shine, Read Aloud Rhymes for Any Size Heart, is actually my third book in the world. And I guess I will just say that I've named the challenges in my growing up years and that I know they were all divinely perfect because now it's like a fuzzy dream of that other life that I had. And I've forgiven all of whatever I needed to forgive. And I am in service to God so that I named that I had that prayer to become the joy I am created to be. Well, I had been given writing gifts. So I have been writing my whole life. Definitely, I have (laughs) big bins filled with my journals. And the first book that came, God woke me up and said, Joy, use the lessons of your life to inspire readers, and came out and call it, what it's called is an alphabetical adventure. Go enjoy an alphabetical adventure, which is questions, essays, and poems. Mm -hmm. Because part of my healing journey was to be in poetry therapy, write poems that were therapeutic When I went to a therapist to heal part of my past, I couldn't speak. I only cried. It wasn't helpful. But I had so much pent-up pain. Writing is such a therapeutic tool. It is incredibly therapeutic. And I'm thrilled that you're writing journals because journals are a daily record of our thoughts and actions and all the good things and bad things that happened that we soon forget sometimes. And they're great to look back on and reflect. You don't have to share them with anybody. They're totally yours. (laughs) So they are really, really special. Journals are neat. Yeah. And art and listeners, my second book is called Venture to Your Center, Journaling Prompts to Enliven Your Joy. (laughs) And that book wrote itself through me in two weeks with power and play. It's filled with valuable questions for the individual that would like to read them and write to understand themselves. And then Design to Shine came, and I'm just in awe that I am an author of three (laughs) three inspiring books. I'm pretty sure that my soul came here to have my joy squashed so that I could find my way back to this place where I am. Do you think that really what the result of it is, is that you inspire others to change and that they, through your writing, can believe in themselves and have the expectation that they can change and you create that change. You're the changing agent, which is what is so powerful about the written word, about the spoken word, is that when it creates people to change for the better, It's great. So is that a fair summation of it? Yes. Thank you, Art. I think I haven't thought of myself that way, but I have used the term that I am, I inspire people to live differently. And definitely in my first book, there's a poem that inspired the man who's currently in my life to be in my life. And I inspire him every day, and he is now really cleaning out his home. He lived there for 18 years. But yeah, I'm grateful and happy to be this version of who I am because I do affect people in really positive ways. Why do you think people are so resistant to change? What is it about change that puts the fear in people that is just, I mean, people, it does. I mean, I write a lot about expectations looking at them two lenses, either faith or fear. And of course, we know that fear stops and faith builds and creates. But it can vacillate all the time on different issues. I mean, like I always tell people I'm fearless, but that's not really true because if you put a tightrope across the Grand Canyon, you're not getting me on it. <laughs> so, right, right. Yeah, so it changes, but... Well, I can speak to that of that I was, when I lived in fear... I was really highly resistant to change. And even that term you used, Art Change Agent, I used that about my ex because when I was in the marriage, he is the one that said, we need to get you a different desk. I want to fit behind that desk. We need to have a different kitchen. 
and I called him my change agent. I can't speak for other people, but my belief, if I was going to guess, why do people resist change? I would say they might be very controlling. And if they like how their world is, they don't want it to change. They might be concerned about the unknown that have fear of the unknown. And I love the mystery of the unknown. But (laughs) like I know people this way who are this way that their life is really not that great. They're not really loving their situation or the people that they hang out with, but they'd rather have a so-so situation than believe, maybe they're unable to believe that the unknown could be so much better. And I think that for me now, well, the fact that I embrace change has made me so much more adventuresome I'm living, and years ago I was hiding and maybe kind of an observing life. I was doing a lot of observing of life. (laughs) And I talk about this a lot, probably too much sometimes, but I believe that when we don't listen to our own core expectations or our own expectations, and we listen to the expectations of others, that we lose our sense of self and we start living their life or what they want our life to be, but it's through their eyes. And it causes extreme unhappiness when you start living to the expectations of others. And it happens a lot in relationships. Then when it goes away and all else is gone and somebody has complete control of you, what do you do? You lose it totally. I mean, you've given up everything that is near and dear to you. Has anyone ever inspired you to discover a happier, healthier, and more fulfilled you? It is a magical experience, isn't it? Inspiration is indeed very powerful, yet it's often undermined. It can lift you from the ground to the sky in no time. Have you ever thought about returning the favor by inspiring the people around you? If you don't think you have it in you, we have good news for you. Art Costello's online course has everything you need to learn to supercharge yourself and shape your character into a powerful personality. Get ready to discover your strengths and unleash the creativity within. Don't believe it? Check it out yourself by signing up for this life-changing course at expectationacademy.com. That's expectationacademy.com. I grew up in a codependent household. So I have a spiritual practice with my boyfriend on the phone. He lives 30 minutes from me. And we talk every morning and every night. And we share this practice where I read to him. He loves my voice. A lot of people love my voice because I don't know why exactly, but I think it's because I am who I am. I am filled with joy and love. Authenticity. (laughs) You're authentic. I sensed it the minute that we started talking and I knew you were authentic. So, and that's my my kind of people. That's what most people want. Want you to be authentic because who wants to deal with somebody who is phony and not authentic? I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Oh, yes. Well, I think that when I was driven by my ego and I was trying to be somebody, I was this inauthentic version of joy when I know that as I have become more and more who I am and the ego has quieted and quieted, I cannot not be me. And so that is authenticity. And my throat chakra opened when I was 53, so I could finally speak for myself. And I don't know how many of us are going through life not speaking for ourselves. Many. Yeah, the freedom. I think that, I mean, where I am is just the freedom and the love and the peace and the miracles that happen. And I recommend to anybody to listen within, follow your heart. 
follow where you can to become, release what you can to become more of who you really are beyond all those expectations. And watch your creativity flow. Because when you do that, that's what happens. Your creativity just blossoms and it creates this whole scenario of where your life takes on the path that it was meant to be. Your journey will just change. It happened to me at 63. So 10 years ago, gee, I'm making myself older. (laughs) Eight years ago, nine years ago. I'm with you and that when I surrendered my will and my ego and got down on the ground, gave myself over divinity to God, and I have watched my life completely change. And I was just going to speak about what you said in my birth. (laughs) It happens to the best of us. (laughs) Oh, I know what I was going to say, Art, about creativity. OMG, I have more ideas than I can live into probably in this lifetime of ways to, things to do. But I will say that this book that you love, Designed to Shine, Read Aloud Rhymes for Any Size Heart, and that maybe you would allow me to read a rhyme from it. Absolutely. That this book has a sequel coming. Book two of this book will come out possibly later this year or next year with a whole new alphabet of enlivening, meaningful, wise rhymes where this one starts attention, balance, change, dance, energy, forgive. The new book is Amaze, Believe, Create, Dream, Extra, Frosting. I think you need to write a section on expectations, on how to manage expectations, (laughs) because it's so important for people. But we'll talk about that later. I want to hear you read. Thank you. Shall I read the rhyme on change art? Absolutely. Change. Change, we all feel it. It's how the world rocks. Tight tulips that open, clock hands which tick tock. A seal on the corner who likes your green hat. The one who is waving before sliding. Curse, flat. Change is forever. It's how the world turns. You fliggle or wiggle in flow as you learn. Sulking and screaming don't change change a bit, but breathing through change lets smiles gently fit. (laughs) Beautiful. I mean, this book is just chock full of those beautiful nuggets. I don't even want to call them nuggets. They're beautiful prose that just absolutely inspire and have a lot of wisdom. And it's a pleasure to have read it. And again, I'll encourage it to everybody. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, on the back, it says, a little bit of the back says, you'll receive ideas to pay attention in new ways, reminders about kindness, and so much more in this alphabetical treasure. This is a book a guide, and a gentle teacher all at once. It's a book for you, your child, or your inner child about loving who we are to shine in the world. I love that. When I read that, I fell in love with that because it's such a truth. It's a powerful truth. You let it shine in you and it will glow out of you. And you couldn't have put it in a better way. Wow, 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 wow. Wow. (laughs) See, where do I want to go now after this? I know that this came from your heart. See, I find sometimes, I don't say I find writing difficult, but I think so differently that when I start to put it down, sometimes it becomes difficult putting it into words because I'm a different kind of thinker. If you read any of my work on expectations, you'll realize that I think about things and see things differently. Do you think you see things differently? (laughs) I believe, I do, and I believe each person sees things differently. But for me, the writing process has been effortless, as if I am a channel for something that divinity wants to be here. 
And what I would do is all my books are alphabetical art. And so if I was on a letter for this rhyming book and I would lean into writing that rhyme and if it felt sticky or hard, like it wasn't flowing, I would try it from a different angle, maybe start it over, try it. But if it was sticking again, I would sit quietly and really receive another concept to write about. Mm -hmm. So another C word to write about. For example, this change, I mean, it flowed completely that I had been so resistant to change. And now I understand it is the way of the world. Wow, that's good. I've read that you do spiritual counseling. Tell us about that, how it all works for you. Thank you. Yes, well, I, on part of my healing journey, I was, a friend led me to her spiritual director. And I ended up going to that woman for a while to help me move beyond where I was. I remember she only asked me ever two questions. What are you afraid of? Where is God in this? (laughs) (laughs) But years later, I felt a call to become that. And lo and behold, synchronicity. When we moved to the mountains, a friend of mine in Ohio wrote to me and she said, look at this program that's, I think it's near you. And it was a spiritual direction training program that I ended up graduating from. So I serve clients and it being with them, listening beneath their words so that then I receive questions and wisdom to offer them on their journey. Sometimes they simply want to be connected to God again. They had shut God out of their lives. And I support them in renewing that relationship with divinity. Sometimes they are simply saying yes to everybody else but themselves. And through my support, they learn to honor who they are. All different ways that people find me and what they desire to gain from me really walking next to them to bring them to a new place. Yeah, and you're in a perfect place to do that. And my penchant for the mountains is because my connection to God began as that nine-year-old going to the top of that hill and having that conversation. So for me, the first step in expectation therapy is to identify. So I like to take people out to mountains, out to above the lake, and we look out over the lake because it really grounds, it can ground you into yourself to where I don't know. You just feel more in tune to your environment and what's around you. And it becomes much easier to listen to your inner self and start to gain the trust and faith in believing in yourself and God that there's a plan and he can lead you that way. So where you're at is is probably the epitome of it. You know, (laughs) go up into the Smokies and be on top of a mountain somewhere and just... (laughs) have the universe surrounding you and God's glory just shining all over you. That's a blessing. Thank you. I'm really grateful that my husband moved me to the mountains, grateful that he divorced me because that enabled me to live into who I am so that I could bring blessings to other people. Did the audience just hear what Joy just said? She was thankful that her husband divorced her. (laughs) That is really the epitome of looking at things through a different perspective that is just shifts the way her life is going to change. Instead of the woe is me and wallowing in the hurt and the, the pain, she rose above it and has fulfilled her journey and looked at it, I think, from the perspective of it was meant to be. It just, it happened and did it without bitterness, hopefully. Oh, yes. Thank you. When that divorce happened, and I knew at that moment, I knew so many people who were divorced 15 years earlier, 20 years earlier, but they were still in it. Mm -hmm. And I knew that that wouldn't be me, that I desired to heal the pain of that, the anger of that, whatever of that that was in me, 
so that I could move beyond that journey. And I am so grateful. I mean, every day, art and listeners, I have a gratitude practice that's part of my morning. And I'm just so grateful. And I understand that abundance is not about money. Abundance is about how we feel when we walk onto our property or walk outside and just breathe into the air and we're healthy. I like to look at abundance as freedom and happiness. I mean, that's to me is the epitome of abundance. When you're totally free to think and do as you please and have joy in your heart and be happy in every moment that it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be that way. That's really what we live for. We all live to be happy. Don't you think, do you agree, Art, that, do you have a belief that that is the purpose of living, is to be abundant, is to be free and happy, that the purpose of having a life on earth isn't to be covered over with expectations of other people or wounds or hurts or have blocks in us about this or that. But I think we really are meant to have a happy life if we can. I made that decision at nine years old. I decided after all the pain I had from nine to age probably 16, I changed my expectation that I was in control of my destiny. I was the one who mattered the most. I know some people are going to say that's egotistical, but I don't mean in an egotistical way. I meant that it was almost for me when I was younger as a shield of protection. And I learned that my expectations are what were going to propel me to do the things that I had and wanted to do for myself. And I did not want to live in that. People would say in my teenage years, I was probably defiant, but I lived to my expectations and not the expectations of others. It's just an important, important lesson to learn for people. Oh, yes. And for some of us, I know for me, I can name it. I was in my 50s when my little sister wanted me to drive our very ill father from North Carolina to Pittsburgh for Thanksgiving. And she was talking me into it and telling me all about it. And the next morning, I woke up with this clarity that was crazy, unbelievably great. And the clarity was, wait a minute. She wants me to do this. Her son wants to see grandpa, blah, blah, blah. What do I believe about this? I realized, no, I don't want to drive a very sick father to Pittsburgh. And I got on the phone. I called her and I said, I'm sorry, this is not mine to do. And she's like, we're going to be so upset. And I'm like, okay, you're going to be upset. And I finally got it, Art, what you got at age nine. (laughs) I got at age 50-something. Like, I don't have to please everybody. I need to honor my understandings inside me. Mm -hmm. And this makes a huge difference. Absolutely does. (laughs) (laughs) It's where your freedom and happiness comes from because you have a self-satisfaction about being able to not only stand up, but you're following your beliefs and your inner core strengths and you did the right thing. So once we learn that, it doesn't matter what anyone else calls us, says about it. Those are only words. And if you don't let them penetrate you, then they can't hurt you. It's when you let them penetrate your belief system and your core values and all that. They do, you know, in expectation therapy, one of the things I talk about is a term collective diminished expectations, but One of the things about expectations is when we surrender them to other people, we're surrendering control of our life to them. And that is a recipe for disaster because your own happiness is not going to be fulfilled and neither is the happiness of your people around you. The one person that's controlling you may feel really great about it and super. And sometimes people don't even know they're doing it, but when they do it, They've got control of you. And in there, I mean, we could go into a long thing about it, but people understand me. So they know that's what I write about in research. So I wanted to make sure that we know how people can 
connect with you and where they could connect with you, where they can get your books, <laughs> plural. I don't want to run out of time and all that. So I want to get this in while we've got the chance. Thank you, Art. Yes, people can reach me through my website, which is joyonyourshoulders.com. You could Google Joy Reeser, R-E-S-O-R, and you'll find all the other podcasts I've been on. If you want to hear more from me, some of the stories will be the same because my life is my life. <laughs> but yes, and Facebook, there's a Joy on Your Shoulders page that you can join in on. Come like that. And my books are available through my website. Those would be signed copies or unsigned copies. You could go into any independent bookstore and say, can you get me these books? <laughs> and you could also, if you want to click, you could click because they're on Amazon and Barnes and Noble online also. Right. And folks, this all will be in the show notes as usual. Joy, I want to give you the opportunity to leave us with some words of wisdom. Take your time. Just tell us what you want to leave us with. Thank you, Art. Ah, let's see what arises. Hmm. I encourage you to lean into healing something in your life that's asking to be healed or lean into something that you can release or tweak one little thing. Anything that you can start with is a starting place to improve the version of you that is in the world today. And I also encourage you to believe that you can be a brighter light in the world. And it starts by taking steps. Wise words from joy. <laughs> beautiful words, beautiful. Don't know which direction you want your life to take? Are you sinking deep down into the pit of uncertainties day by day? So, what's the secret to leading a happy, satisfied life? It's taking matters into your own hands. But what if the matters in question are a total blur? Art Costello's Expectation Academy course aims to tell you exactly how you can get some clarity in your life. This course can be your savior on your journey to reinventing yourself. While you certainly can't plan your whole future ahead, you can definitely control twists and turns your life takes. So what are you waiting for? Sign up for this course now at expectationacademy.com. Get a chance to broaden your horizons and add meaning to your life. That's expectationacademy.com. Well, Joy, that wraps it up for the show today. It's been a pleasure having you on. We're going to have to do this again. I would love to chat more and uh, learn more about you. And I encourage everybody to go get this book, go find out more about Joy, support her, and Shower Epiphany's World. It's been a great show. I think we've laid out some great nuggets, and Joy has given us a lot of stuff to chew on and digest, and I encourage you all to do so. Thank you, everybody. Heather White, take us away. Thanks for listening to the show. Drop us your comments and questions with what you want answered on the show. You can subscribe on iTunes and Binge Network. You can also get more information on the website, expectationtherapy.com.